I uh, started recording, and the slightest little sound from from anybody uh, distorts the the voice uh, and the recording. So, if you could all mute your microphones, I would appreciate it. And um, if you you know if you want to chime in or anything like that, that's no problem. You chime in, but uh, during the course of the study, uh, when I'm yapping away, uh, you can mute. And I'll, uh, that would be appreciated. So uh, we could do that. And uh, we prayed already. And we'll just, uh, like I said, we're in the Gospel of the Stars. We're still in this. And uh, today we're going to uh, start on Gemini. And uh, this here, like I said, has been uh, a very confusing one for me because there's so many different pitches for this Gemini. Um, you know, it's it's uh, uh, basically the twins, uh, and and it's and it's it's it's, it's, it's talking about his rule uh, on Earth. And uh, let me see if I got uh, some pictures I can show you here that might help. Uh, uh, Gemini constellation um, is over here. Okay, and. Uh, Basically, uh, you know, this this is why uh, I don't like the pictures that they they show you. But these these are good because it's just the stars and there's a basic outline here. Like you see Gemini here, you see like the two stick figures, and uh, the major stars in here. You've got uh, Castor and Pollux are the two stars. We'll talk about them. And there's other uh, decans. Uh, there's three decans. Uh, there's one called uh, the Lepus, and that's over here. It looks like a little a little hare or a little rabbit, you know, and um, in some uh, cultures, it's it's a snake. <laughs> in other cultures, it's different things. So there's a lot of different things. And even this Gemini, these twins, sometimes it's two little boys. Sometimes it's a male and a female. Uh, so, uh, you know, but we don't, we don't, we don't worry about that. Uh, we're just worried about what it uh, actually means, what the, uh, the star names mean. And then you got the, like I said, you got the lepus over here. So that's down here. Uh, and as you can see, here's Screen Orion. Share, please. Hello? Yeah, uh, were you going to screen share? Screen share. I can't hear you. Oh, the screen share. I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot about that. Thanks. Uh, if this is the one, hold on a second. I'm, 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 I'm talking about these things that I'm showing you, these pictures, and there's nothing there. Right. So all right. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. So, like I said, uh, <laughs> let me go back to the Gemini. Uh, okay. Here's the twin. If you can, if you can mute, uh, Jan, that would be great. If, uh, if you could turn off your microphone. Like I said, there's a lot of distortion. It, the slightest little sound uh, causes a distortion in the recording. So, like I said, here's Gemini. Uh, it's the twins. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're not concerned with what they look like. We just we, we just want to get into the stars. And uh, another uh, decan here is, is the, the Lepus. Or the, uh, and it's also uh, it looks like a hair. They have a picture of a hair. And some in some cultures, it's a snake, and, and other things. Uh, and that's uh, that's the lepus. And then you have, uh, but I, as you can see, his his is uh, uh, Orion, and his foot here is crushing uh, the hair or the lepus uh, over there. And uh, you got Canis Major, which is a uh, a, a dog. Uh, and it's called uh, Sirius. We'll get into all these star names later. But I just want to show you where these things are in the sky. Uh, so he's right next to Lepus over there. And uh, uh, and then the Canis Minor, which is the uh, second dog. Uh, we'll get into these two. Uh, he's a little thing right here. And, and as you can see, uh, they're, they're all almost with each other. Orion is almost... A, a big part of this uh, Gemini thing also. And he's part of Taurus. There's Taurus, with, there's the bull, there's the bull with the horns here. Uh, 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 
So uh, Gemini and there's uh, Canis uh, Minor, uh, Leap is here, and Canis Major. So you're up in the sky, if you're looking up in the sky, that's, that's what you would see, these, these major stars up there. And it's easy to see Orion. I see Orion's belt all the time, these three stars here. So now, you know, when, when, I'm, when I'm looking at Orion's belt, I can say, okay, right under there is Lepus, right over here is Taurus, and uh, over here is Gemini, and, uh, and there's uh, Canis Major and, and Canis Minor. So we'll get into these uh, and, and what they mean in, in a second here. So we'll go on this here, and the first one here. So... Um, Like I said, this is very hard for me because uh, uh, there was so much uh, convolution in, in this uh, in this uh, uh, particular constellation. But I wanted to get a few things down here. Uh, Zechariah six thirteen. And well, let me let me give, give you some of the uh, some of the stars, some of the names here, because uh, it's 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 the twins and it's two, and, and it's they're coupled together. Uh, so we have uh, uh, this one uh, name here is uh, Shenaim, and it means two. Uh, also, a Sheni, which means the second or another. And that's one of the, uh, it's, it's not actually a star name up there, but one of the verses uh, has to do with this uh, Psalms 22 and 20. See if I got it here. Psalms 22 and 20. If this is the right one. Uh, 22. 20 here. Uh, oh, that's a different one. Okay. Uh, from the darling is the word here. So we'll get into this yacht key too. Okay. That's coming down the, ride, down the road here. And twins. Uh, so the Hebrew name is Thaumim, T-H-A-U-M-I-M, -M. and here's the twins here. This is Taom, because uh, one of the stars is Thaumim or Talmam in the Arabic. So you got, you got Arabic, Syriac, uh, Coptic, Latin, all these different names uh, for these stars. Uh, but the Hebrew name here is Taom, and it means twin. And also uh, over here is ta'am, which means coupled together. And uh, when they when they couple together all of the uh, the uh, the rings in in the in the in the what do you call it in the uh, man I can't even think today. Uh, coupled together here Exodus twenty six twenty four and they shall be coupled together beneath and they shall be coupled together above. The head of it, uh, one onto one ring, they shall be for them both, and they be, shall be for the two corners. So that's the coupling together in the uh, in the tabernacle there, the the, uh, the curtains. All right, and um, eighty three. Okay, then you got uh, Zechariah uh, six thirteen. See if I got this down here. Yeah, six thirteen. Um, is even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And he's talking about uh, Joshua and Zerubbabel, which were the priest and the king. So that's the, 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 the concept of the two being coupled together, the, the priest and the king is coming together. Um, and, and two is it's it's not plural, uh, but dual. Uh, it it, uh, it 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 indicates uh, unity. Uh, it's what we're getting at here is the unity. So it's, he's the priest and a king, and that's why they call uh, uh, Melchizedek uh, when Christ was called uh, Melchizedek. Uh, he, he's Lord and priest. Uh, the kingdom and the priesthood shall meet in one person, and that's what Melchizedek was talking about. And Melchizedek. Zedek was long before uh, there was any Levi or, or anybody else like that. So, you know, uh, when it talks about Abraham uh, paid tithes in, in, uh, to Mel Melchizedek, uh, which means that uh, but Aaron and Levi paid tithes long before they were born, you know. So, uh, 
uh, it's easy to say, you know, that, that he was God and man, uh, but, you know, we want to find out exactly what that means. Because uh, he said, uh, I and my father are one. Um, let's see if I got this here. I got a bunch of, bunch of verses here. There's Melchizedek. All right. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, damn. Uh, it's the channel here. No, 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 no. Okay, so I don't have these verses. I got to put up some more stuff up by here. So um, we'll get some of these verses about him uh, talking about himself uh, and, 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 and God being one. I'll get back to this uh, Zechariah 613. There's something I want to read in Barnes about that also. He had some pretty good stuff in there. Um, but John. 10.30 Okay, I and my father are one All right, let me see if I can get a cross reference on this here Yeah, okay John 1.1 1, 1. in the beginning was the word the words was, was with God and the word uh, Was God uh, the same was in the beginning with God and uh, John uh, 14 10 and 11. We get this. 15, 10 and 11. Uh, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. So he's always constantly talking about that. He's in the Father, and uh, the Father is in him. And John 17, what is it, 22. Um, well, John 17, I, I like the whole chapter. He's talking, he's, he, he's, he's praying to his Father, and, all, and the 12 or the 11 are sitting around uh, listening to him, and he's talking about a lot of predestination, and he's telling his father, you gave these guys to me, they're mine. Uh, they were yours, but now they're mine, and we're all one. And this is all, this is what I'm trying to get to, to impart to you, the, the unity here that he's talking about. In John 17, uh, and 10, he says, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And down to 22, uh, I'm going to read the whole thing here. Uh, yeah, okay, let's go. Let's read it. All right, 11, he says, uh, now, now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, <coughs> and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, uh, that they may be one, as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, and those that gavest me, I have kept, and none of them lost, except but for the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And that's uh, Judas. And now I come to thee, uh, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them my word, and they and the world hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the Thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified uh, through the truth. And uh, we we'll go 20 down to 22. He says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. And that's basically us. <laughs> uh, they. Uh, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me, and has loved them. So this is basically what this this uh, Gemini is talking about: is all of us coming together into one, and uh, that's what we're going to be. 
uh, come and come to, come to the end. We're going to know him. He's going to know us. Well, of course, he knows us. But we're going to know him uh, as he uh, as he really is. Because right now we haven't the slightest clue. Um, uh, Romans twelve. Let me get this out of here. Hold on a second. Romans twelve. Uh, what is it? Five? Looks like five. Oh, five. He says, So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. So this, this is what we're going to drive this home. This this one here. Uh, John 5, uh, 26 and 27. John 5, 26 and 27. I'm always amazed that I, I find all of these cross references. To, to all these different concepts here uh, that are in the Bible that Jesus is trying to push. Um, for as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he sees the Son of Man. Um, and he's th this also what he's doing here in this sign is, 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 is executing judgment. Um, and we'll see that a little later on with some of the uh, some of the star names. Um, and John, because we look at 14, yeah, 10 and 11, okay. Uh, and uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, some of these just pop right out and we know what they are. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, he says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Uh, it's beautiful there. And then um, uh, John, well, let's do Philippians first. Philippians, get some of these out of here. Uh, Philippians 2.6. Philippians 2.6. 2.6. Who, uh, oh, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And then uh, John 1.18 um, is talking about uh, the only begotten, I believe. Hold on a second. John 1.18. Uh, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this uh, only begotten... Uh, I got a bunch of verses on this. Hold on a second. Whoops. Uh, let's see if I got these here. Hold on a second. Uh, boy, I got to make up another one. Look at all of these here I got. All right, let me put it up here. Hold on. Only begotten. This is a, there's a couple of good verses here. He says, uh, John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's where Jim got the name of the, uh, the fellowship for. Uh, and the other verse here, nobody's seen God at any time. Okay, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Okay, and John 3, 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And, um, and 1 Corinthians, 1 John 4, 9, And this was manifested the love of God toward, toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son in the world, that we might live through him. And only begotten is this word here, monogenes. Uh, mono is, is one or only. And genes, of course, is, is, is to be or to uh, it's a gene, you know, monogenes, genomai, to be. Uh, so it's one, it's the only son. Um, and I had some stuff in the theological dictionary I wanted to look at, but I don't know if I want to go through all of this here right now. Uh, but this other uh, concept here in this uh, Gemini, in this twin, uh, besides being the united and, and the, twi the twined and the twins and the pair, uh, this uh, 3161. Let me get this out of here. Maybe I can 
open this up a little bit. 3161. Let's see if I got it here. 3161. There it is. 3161. Okay, United. Uh, 3161 is uh, Yachad. It means unite or to join. And also together with that is Yachad, which means together, or union, un uh, unitedness, uh, all together. Uh, but there's one that uh, that stood out for me here. This is the Psalm 20 to 20 I was talking about. He says, deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. And this word darling, I don't even know why it's there. Uh, but it's it's Yachid. And it's talking about only. So this is like when you get only begotten. Most of the time when you look up in the Septuagint, you'll see uh, monogenes for these words here. Uh, united, together, only, only child. So these are all together. Uh, yakid, uh, yakad, and the other one is yakad also. Uh, different vowel points, but that, uh, that's basically the... Um, uh, so they're going to be to uh, both of them. So in, in Zechariah six thirteen, it's talking about both of them. It's talking about uh, the priest and the king uh, coming together here. Uh, let me see. Uh, um, we read this. Uh, I forgot where I had this here, but. Um, let me go up to the top here. Self, John, this is the only begotten of the Father. Okay. Let's see. transfiguration is that. Okay. Uh, he shall be a priest upon his throne. He shall be at once king and priest. As it is said, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, when the Christ should reign, he should not cease to be our priest. He, having all power given to him in heaven and earth, reigneth over his church and his elect by his grace and over the world by his power, yet ever liveth to make intercession for us. Uh, not dwellings now on what is chiefest, that by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, uh, and he is before all things and by him, all things consist. First Corinthians, uh, excuse me, Colossians 1, uh, 16 and 17. Um, how many crowns of glory belong to him? One and the same God and man, Christ Jesus. He then will bear glory and will sit upon his throne and shall be a priest on his throne. Uh, how just this is, it is easier to think than to express that he should sit and rule all things by whom all things were made, and he should be a priest forever by whose blood all things are reconciled he shall rule then upon his throne and he shall, bow, shall be a priest upon his throne so he's the priest and the king which which cannot be said of any saints because uh, it is the right of none of them to call the throne of his rule or any of his priesthood of his own but of this only lord and priest whose majesty and throne are one and the same with the majesty of god as he saith, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, then shall he sit upon the throne of his majesty. And that's that's his glory. And that's in uh, Matthew uh, 25, 31. Then it's just, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels are with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And this is what Gemini is talking about. Because we, we're past all of, the, all of the problems we had in the first two books, you know, the first uh, eight constellations. Uh, talking about all the problems and trials and tribulations. And the, uh, but this is the victory here. These these last four uh, constellations are talking about the victory, uh, the, re the redemption, uh, and us being with him, you know, uh, the redeemed uh, and the redeemer together. Um, and, and what meaneth that reduplication, and he shall rule on his throne, but uh, that one and the same of whom all this is said, uh, should be and is king and priest. Uh, he who is king shall rule on his throne because kingdom and priesthood shall meet in one person and one shall occupy the double throne of kingdom and priesthood. 
uh, he alone should be our king, he alone our savior, he alone the object of all love, obedience, and adoration. And when it talks about the and, the and the council of peace shall be between them both. The council of peace, it's not merely peace. Uh, he is both uh, king and priest, you know, and shall sit uh, on the royal and sacred total throne, uh, and there shall be uh, uh, peaceful councils between them. Uh, so when you have a peaceful council, uh, it's, it's it's hard to explain. So that neither should be the royal eminence uh, depress the dignity of the pre of the priesthood, nor the dignity of the priesthood, the royal eminency, but both should be consistent in the glory of the one Lord Jesus. And this is perfect counsel. When you're talking about the council of peace, it's the council of oneness. It's the two of them together. And they're all talking about the same thing. You don't even need a council. <laughs> because the mind, all, all the minds will be uh, as one. Uh, for had this been all the simple idiom, there shall be peace between them, uh, would have been used here as elsewhere. And you'll see that in, in, in other parts of the Bible, but it doesn't mean the same thing. This is when it talks about the council of peace here, it's talking about the oneness uh of uh, the king and the priest together. Um, the two I can't be. Uh, so I didn't read all of this here. Uh, yeah, okay. It's talking about Tim. All right. Okay. Good. So uh, basically, and the, the word here uh, between them both is uh, eighty-one forty-seven, and that's the the Shanaim, uh, the two. Uh, to both of them, um, priest upon the throne and the council of peace. Yes, okay. Let me get this out here so I can make some room for some more uh, for these online Bible things here. And then this uh, Yaqid, like I said, that's the uh, Yaqid uh, together, uh, united, twine. Uh, and then you got uh, 858, and there's another one here. And it's really not a star, but um, let me get this. And you got this other one. It's called Pi May. <laughs> I, I thought of that movie, uh, Kill Bill. And the guy's name was Pi May. Uh, it means united, or as in brotherhood. And um, let me see if that's Zechariah. 13.7, I think it is. Hold on a second. Zechariah 13.7. See if I got that here. Here it is, 13.7. Um, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hands upon the little ones. Now, when you read that, you do sounds like a bad thing but this is exactly what god is doing when he talks about um the shepherd we know he's talking about christ and against the man that is my fellow and this word fellow here is amith let's see if i got that down here that's amith 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 yes that's in zechariah 13 7 it's the fellow um and it's also um, 8147, 8380. 8147, they got that. 8380, 8380 is fellow. That's the twins. We look at this already. That's the Taom. And also, you've got the Greek here. You've got Thomas. Thomas means twin. So he's one of the apostles. Uh, Didymus also uh, means twin. But when he says, when he's talking about fellow here, he's talking about actually his only begotten. You know, that is my fellow, saith the Lord. So you smite the, the shepherd, smite my, my son, and the sheep will be scattered. And I will turn uh, mine hand upon the little ones. And that's, that's the, sheep, the sheep, that's the flock here. Um, let me see, there was something in here. Uh, the sword shall be aroused against my shepherd. That is, I will allow him to be smitten by the Jews. Uh, basically, what that means. Uh, and by the sword, it, it, it can mean anything. You know, uh, it just means a death. Um, 11 and 7. 
Oh, 13 and 7. Okay. Uh, okay, the one. One united by community of nature. Uh, uh, a little before God had spoken of himself as priced at 30 pieces of silver, yet as breaking the covenant which he had made with all nations for his people as pierced through, yet as pouring the spirit of grace and supplication on those who pierced him, that they should mourn their deeds and as thereon ever cleanse them from sin. Uh, as man, God was sold, was pierced. Uh, God in flesh, not working with aught intervening as in the prophets, but having taken to him a manhood co-natural with himself and made one and through his flesh akin to us, drawing up to him all humanity. Uh, what was the matter of the Godhead in the flesh? As fire and iron, not transitively, uh, but by communication. For the fire does not dart into the iron but remains there and communicates to it of its own nat virtue, not impaired by the communication, yet filling uh, wholly its recipient. So you stick a, a rod of, of iron in, in the fire, it, it doesn't take over right away. Um, let me see. Uh, since the, the manhood was taken into God, and in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and God and man were one Christ, then was it all true language. His body was the body of God, his flesh, the flesh of the word. Uh, and it was lawful to speak of the flesh of the deity or the passion of the word, the passion of Christ, my God, the passion of God, uh, God dead and buried, God suffered, you know. Um, let me see. Uh, the God who dwelt in the flesh bodily, which is all one uh, with saying that being God, he had a proper body and you. Using this as an instrument, he became man for our sakes, and became, and because of this, uh, things proper to the flesh are said to be his, since he was in it, as hunger, thirst, suffering, fatigue, and the like, uh, of which the flesh is capable, while the works proper to the word himself, as raising the dead and restoring the blind, he did through his own body. So he was fully man uh, and fully divine, uh, all in the same. But he was God. Uh, as but a continuance of the language of Zechariah, since he was sold, was priced, was Almighty God, Jesus being God and man, the sufferings of his humanity were the sufferings of God, although all, as God he could not suffer. Now, conversely, God speaks of the shepherd who was slain as my fellow, united in nature with himself. So God's speaking of, of Jesus as his fellow, um, united in nature with himself. Although not the man of, of Jesus which suffered, but the Godhead united with it in one person was consubstantial with himself. Uh, the name might perhaps be more nearly represented as co-natural. Uh, and I can't read all this, but there's some good stuff in here uh, on the bonds. And uh, JFB has some good stuff. Jameson Fawcett Brown. Uh, Turn my hands upon the little ones. Uh, namely the humble followers of Christ from the Jewish curse to despise the word, uh, the poor of the flock, uh, comforted after his crucifixion, at the resurrection. Uh, Paul has some good stuff on this. Paul, um, who was my faithful shepherd and will lay down his life for my sheep, who became man that he might be my servant and die. So this is Jesus talking about his fellow, his Jesus, his, his Christ himself be, being flesh. And, uh, and the sin uh, that he hated so much, uh, we couldn't do anything. Uh, so his only begotten, his uh, sinless uh, son, uh, the lamb of the world, uh, was slain and took upon us our sin. And that's what the gospel is all about. I mean, uh, Jesus was, you know, in the flesh, you know, became man, uh, suffered, crucified, died, and resurrected. And that's uh, the gospel in the stars. Only begotten. All right, we got this word. Uh, these are good words here. I like them. Uh, Yaqid only. Talk that. All right, we'll get this out. Make some more room over here. One of these other ones, that's the twins. Uh, we looked at this, 8380s, the twins, couple, Ta'om, that's one of the stars, Thomin, that's the first star up there, 
All right, we'll get this out, make some room here. Let's see what else we got. And this is the affliction. This is going back down a little further down here. Hold on. That's the two United. Shanaim, uh, we looked at that. Uh, we looked at Yahed and uh, Hebar. I don't think we looked at Hebar. Hold on a second. 598. Uh, Hebar. Uh, associate. Uh, Stripe mark he joins a couple together. Let me see if I got some verses here. Um, he joined um, community, trying to bind the Syrian. The main idea of hey, Barney, the Old Testament is to join or unite two or more things, however, the root idea of the term to bind also appears, especially in the concept. Uh, only in Deuteronomy 18.11 does the term appear in a verbal form to express the idea of charming, casting a spell, or try, tying up a person by magic. Okay, that's something else. Uh, in 18.15, uh, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, and thy brethren like unto thee, and unto him shalt thou hearken. And the um in the midst of the it's probably the word here no that's not it uh, hawking up to you what's the word here hold on hey bar hey bar that's key kareb couple together 2266 yeah, that's the 2266. That's the one I'm looking for. Kebar, 2266. Hold on a second. Five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. 2266. Oh, joined together. I'm just wondering what this Deuteronomy uh, 18 is here. Yeah, hold on a second. It's not even in there. Okay. <laughs> oh, there it is. A charmer. Okay. A charmer or a consultant. I don't know why they got a charmer in there. All right. And then um, I didn't look at this too much, but it has to do with uh, uniting and uh, being coupled. And I thought it was a good word to look at, but there isn't much in here having to do with uh, our purposes for uniting and uh, being coupled together uh, in this Gemini. All right. So another one here, um, 7, 11, and 4, Zechariah 11 and 4. Let me call one of these up here. Zechariah 11 and 4. Zechariah 11 and 4. Let's see what this word is here. Let's say, the Lord my God, feed the flock of the slaughter. And this is 0264. Uh, 11 and 4, right? No, 11, excuse me. 11 and 14. Boy, that's a big difference, huh? 11 and 14. Then I cut a son of my other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And this word here is 264. Uh, brotherhood, here we go. Brotherhood, Achava, is one of the words here, and it means a brotherhood, fraternity, or a brotherhood. Uh, also, brethren, brother, another. Okay, T W T sixty two. Let me But these are all uh, words that have to do with coupling together, uh, being united, uh, 
being a pair, being twinned. Uh, and this here is brother, brotherhood, or sisterhood. Here we go. Uh, good. All right. Get another one of these here. Hold on a second. Um, and another one is the uh, Ditto My. We got the twins. Okay. Uh, 1324. I think that's a Greek one. And that might be Didymus here. Yeah, that's Didymus. Uh, Didymus, uh, twofold or twin or twain, uh, the surname of the apostle uh, Thomas. Uh, and of course, that means Desis means two or twice, and duo is two. Uh, all these things break down. So Didymus there. Yeah. And then uh, another word I was looking at is. Um, is the station of the coming or the wayfaring man, and that's 732. I know it's tedious looking up all of these star names, but uh, this is how we got to do it. Uh, this is one of them up there. This is wayfaring man, and it's called Arak, a wayfaring man. He's going, he's wandering, he's journeying. All right, that's 9 2. Uh, it's the verse they give us, but like I said, the verses uh, really are, are just giving us the uh, the verb here. But uh, I want to get into some of the names here. Uh, uh, branch, and we got the Jeremiah 23.5 and 33.15, talking about the branch. You see the branch in almost all of these, these constellations. Uh, Jeremiah, we got uh, 23.5. And 3315. And 3315. We look at these from the very beginning. Uh, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that are raised unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and he shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And Jeremiah 33, 15, in those days, and at that time, like was the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. And there's the branch is Semek. Uh, should be the same thing over here. So branch, yes, Semek is the branch, uh, the bow, uh, the spreading, and um, uh, para and Push. Let me see. It's, uh, but the, uh, the the star name is uh, Propus, uh, but it means uh, 6288. Getting tedious again. Hold on a second. But this is how I, 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 I get these, these verbs down there. Uh, the only way you're going to do it is look up all of these. Is the bow or the bow or the sprig, the branch. And it's uh, para. Because the name of the uh, in the sign is, is Propus, uh, uh, and it's called the branch or the spreading. And you got 6288, and you got 6335. 6335 uh, is push, which means to spread or to grow up, to spring out. So that's the branch uh, spreading. Uh, porash and push. Pora and push. Uh, and it's, it's Propus is, is the name. And then you have another name in here, uh, Mebsuda, which means treading underfoot. Treading underfoot, and it's uh, Mebsuda, uh, uh, 947. Uh, tread them under. And the word here is Bus, which means to tread. Uh, but they got Mebsuda there. Excuse me, yeah, Mebsuda, treading on the foot, uh, boos, and then uh, Wasat uh, is appointed, and that's, uh, when you get into set, Wasat is, is, is another word for like Seth, because he was the appointed, uh, let me see if I can get this here, is shit, is 078. It's a lot of different words here I can look at. Uh, 7896. Uh, I will put. So sheath means to, to set or to put or to lay. 
uh, but it's it's set in the the star name is Wasat. Uh, but you got seventy eight ninety six. You got looks like seventy seven thirty seven. Make it my own feet like Shava laid equal. So, another word for, for like setting or putting. And then, but the, the one that I got caught up with and uh, that made sense to me uh, is Sheth 8352. 8352. And that's Seth. Uh, and that means uh, compensation. Uh, so he was put, he was appointed uh, in the place set. Shabbat. And uh, there's more stuff uh, for, for, for star names. I'm not going to go crazy, like I said, but we have to know some of these star names. And, and Castor and, and Pollux, we know about uh, Castor and Pollux from, uh, from Axe. What is this? Axe. Uh, I think I would have it down here somewhere. Uh, hold on a second. Castor. These are the two main stars here, Castor and Pollux. And the one word they have for this is uh, Dioscuri. Uh, Castor and Pollux were the twin sons of Jupiter and Leda and were regarded as tutelary divinities to sailors. Uh, it, it comes from uh, Zeus uh, or Jupiter. And Carazon, Carazion, which means damsel or maid. So you put those two words together, Zeus is damsel. <laughs> it's Castor and Pollux. And that, that really uh, doesn't help us in, in this respect. Uh, that's just some, some name of a ship that some, some wayfaring guy, some, some mariner um, named his ship that because they prayed to these gods. They prayed to the, the god of Gemini. There's a phrase, I forget the name of it, it's called Gemini be with you or something like that. Yeah. So uh, they're all nuts. Um, let's see, the Castor, but, but Castor uh, means uh, uh, bearing an arrow and, 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 and haste. Uh, but Castor was associated with Apollo, which means ruler or judge. And um, Pollux was uh, uh, bearing a branch. So one had a, a branch or, or, or what you would call a, uh, a club in his hand. But these aren't like the other, we saw the other arrows being shot and they were in, 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 in war and in haste. But these, are, these guys are sitting here relaxed. One has a club and it's resting on his shoulder, so to speak. And, and the other one has the arrow, and it's it's not uh, being drawn or pulled. Uh, I mean, it has the bow, and it's not. There's no arrow in it. It's just hanging there by his side. So these guys are at peace. You know, they're not. Uh, they're ready for anything because something's going to happen here uh, within the next couple of decans. Uh, there's going to be a lot of destroying going on when he destroys his enemies. Uh, but right now they're sitting there waiting, and 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 they're they're in peace. You know. So that's basically what they that they're talking about there. Um, let me see if I can get you some some star names here that that they go with Castor and Pollux. Uh, uh, Kush. Nah, I don't want to do this. Twenty three sixty three. Hold on a second. Let me just look at this real quick. Sixty three. Go ready. Tasted. Yeah. So this is part of what what Castor uh, uh, means. Uh, uh, Kush is means to go ready, to be in haste. All right. Uh, to make, um, and it's also uh, a ruler. And then you have uh, Pollux, uh, sixty-four, sixteen. Uh, judge, that's uh, Pe Peleli. Peleli uh, means a judge. So uh, that's what they, they are. One is uh, a judge, and uh, one is ruling and, and judging. And um, uh, let me see. And this one is coming to suffer here, the Kalal and the Kole. I'm not going to get into all of these. Let's get into this first decan here, uh, which is the hair. So basically, that that's what the twins are all about, you know, uh, just uh, hanging out, being together, being united. Uh, God and, 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 and Jesus being one, us being one with him, 
and the duality of Jesus. He was he was God and man, and uh, all the unity that it talks about there. Close this this out of there. Okay, and I let's go to my notes real quick. Uh, let me see. I read Barnes. Uh, Fully defined Christ uh, speaks of him, uh, fellow. Okay, we got that. Uh, Amith is the word. We got that fellow man, uh, and and God spared not his own son. Uh, Romans eight thirty two. Okay, he smite the shepherd. Uh, the sheep are scattered. Uh, he turns his hand on the little ones. Uh, actually, in a good sense, let me see if this uh, Isaiah 125, I got something in the margin over here, Isaiah 125, so he's, he's not going to, he says, and I will turn my hand upon thee and, and purely purge away the dross and take away all thy tin. So basically when he says, you know, I'll smite the, the, the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, uh, and he turns his hands on the little ones. That's us. That's the little ones. So he's, he's not uh, going to destroy us when he's talking about turning his hands on us. Um, and us, uh, John uh, 15. John 15. Looks like 18 to 20 here. Could be 8 to 20. I know. Oh, we got this. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I sent unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my saying, they will keep yours also. Uh, 16 and 2. So he's talking to us. He's giving us some uh, some encouragement here. Letting us know we're supposed to be hated. 16 and 2. Uh, they shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whoever kills you thinks that he does God's service. you got people running around killing each other in the name of religion now thinking they're doing God's service. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, Matthew 10, 17. Matthew 10, 17. To uh, 22, uh, but the of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Uh, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Uh, and uh, the brother shall deliver uh, the, up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And that's what we're waiting for, waiting for the twins. <laughs> Luke uh, 21, probably the same thing here. We're getting a little redundant, but uh, Luke 21 uh, 21, 12 to 17, probably the same thing here. Uh, yeah, okay. Bef but before all these, they shall lay their hands on you uh, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony, a martyr. Uh, settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Uh, and you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren, kinsfolks and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death, and yes, you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. There's a t-shirt right there, Luke 21, 17. Walk around with that. Go into church with that shirt on. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Say, what? What are you talking about? Everybody loves me. Matthew 24, 9. Matthew 24, 9. 
They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And 23, 34 to 35. 23, 34, 35. Um, stop it. 34, 23, 34, 35. Stop it. Stop it. Wherefore, behold, I send them to you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel until the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. So, and that's it. You know, uh, they're going to do that to us. Uh, and cease uh, this guy cease his book here. He's got some good stuff And I wanted to read something here that he got in on his uh, in his book so um, talking about uh, Christ's union with his church. Just let me look at my notes real quick uh, Jesus is one with the father and the father with, uh, slew him when he bore our sins, so we are one with him and the Father, and all enemies are subdued. Uh, they, they will be subdued, but right now these two, uh, Gemini, uh, the twins, are at rest. They're at peace, uh, and this is uh, Messiah's uh, peaceful reign, because uh, we'll, we're coming to the point where he's going to put all enemies under his feet, and that's death. And we're going to be hanging out with him. And uh, I think this is Psalm 72. Hold on a second. I think this whole thing is about this. I didn't really look at it. I, I wrote it down. Uh, Psalm 72. A lot of verses here. Hold on a second. Um, give the king thy judgment, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. And that's what this Gemini is all about. Uh, they shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure through all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. In his days shall a righteous flourish, and abundance of peace, uh, so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. So he's talking about helping us and destroying our enemies. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, and all nations shall, shall serve him. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and the needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their souls from deceit and violence, and precious shall be their blood in his sight. And he shall live, and to him shall be given the gold of Sheba. Pray also, prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, and the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed because the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things and blessed be his glorious name forever and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse are ended. So he's talking about the end of time there. Uh, but this... Um, uh, he's got some stuff here, this jo Joseph C. C. He says, uh, the two figures in, in this sign, uh, though in some sense distinct, are really one. As Christ and the Father are one, and as the, as the man and his wife are one flesh. Uh, so it's, it's talking about, you know, God's union with, with Jesus and our union also with Jesus. So, you know, like, it, you could say duality, but it, there's three of us there, you know. Uh, so it's, 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 it's Christ and the church. Uh, and it's also with God and, and his son. Um, the union is such that one is in the other, and the two are so co-joined that one implies 
and embraces the others. There is no Christ apart from from his church, and there is no church except in Christ. Uh, they are two, and yet they are one. He in them, and they in him, uh, so that what is in his, theirs, and, and what is theirs is his. So what's his is, is theirs, and what's theirs is his. As he is the peculiar son of God, they are peculiar sons of God in him, and are joint heirs with him uh, to all that he inherits. So I was talking about all of us together. Again and again, the scriptures uh, comprehend him in the descriptions of the church and embrace them in the predictions concerning him. Hence, in the truer and deeper meaning of the Psalms, he and his people speak the same words, pass through the same experiences, receive the same assurances, and rejoice in the same promises, hopes, and honors. The king often disappears in the body politic, and the body politic still often it disappears in the king. And so it is in these two figures. They are no more twins than Christ and his church are twins, yet they are both the peculiar sons of God. I like that one. They are no more twins uh, more than uh, Christ and his church are twins, yet they are both the peculiar sons of God. Uh, whilst the birth of the one was virtually and really the birth of the other. Uh, at present, this union of Christ with his church, though real, and the very life of Christianity is mystic, hidden, and not yet fully revealed. The church is yet intermixed and held down by earthiness and the power of mortality and death. So, you know, that's why it's, it's not fulfilled yet. So we're waiting. So uh, it talks about the marriage of the Lamb uh, in Revelation uh, 19. Uh, you, it's Revelation 19 is uh, the, the whole book of uh, Revelation is talking about this and then you're talking about the marriage of the Lamb here uh, let us uh, be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready and we looked at that when we looked at Andromeda and, and Cassiopeia uh, when, the, when, the, when the, 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 the beauty on the throne see Yafi uh, getting herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and he said unto me right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb and he saith unto me these are the true sayings of God so that's the marriage there so we know in general terms that the, the Bible uh, that the bridegroom is Christ and he has uh, taken to him great power and is about to proceed uh, to the utter destruction of his enemies. And that the bride is the church, the completed assembly of the elect, uh, after they have been gathered to their Lord in triumphant immortality. And that's, that's a future thing, you know. Uh, it is God's sign in the heavens of the coming marriage and union of the seed of the woman and his redeemed church, precisely as the same is set forth in all his word, as the hope and joy of his people to be, to be fulfilled at his revelation and coming. So this is all future stuff. And uh, this uh, Lepus, uh, which is the enemy. So there's always something here, you know, we talk about that, and then we get into the enemy, and then what happens to the enemy. So this Lepus here, uh, real quickly, is, is the, the enemy. It could be anything. They have it as a hare. Uh, it's an unclean animal. Uh, could be a uh, serpent, it could be anything, but uh, they, they basically have this uh, lepus, and we'll, we'll define a few things here to help us out uh, to understand what this uh, this character is. Uh, but we know it's, uh, it's ultimately it's Satan, so that's all we got to worry about. Uh, it's the enemy, and the word here is, uh, is R, and there's another one. 935. I got the man together. Yeah, oh, 935. 935 is bought. Bought. Come. So it's the destroy. It's the enemy coming, and it's our bow. Uh, but the, the the word here in Hebrew is our nebo, and that's what's what's called this lepus is called is called our nebo, and that's the enemy. That comes, and when you put these two words R and Bo, uh, you get you get the, the the picture of the star on Ebo. And 
we'll put them all together and we'll come up with this uh, 768. We'll get these and you'll see it better, a better picture here. 768 is the hair. All right. And we put them together and you get on the bath, the hair. So that's the, the enemy coming, basically what that means. Uh, the hair, you wouldn't know what to look at that, but that's uh, that's what it means. It's the enemy coming. Uh, and we got a couple of things. Nibal, you know about Nibal. He was the, the guy that uh, uh, David went to uh, to his his, 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 his his ranch or whatever he had there, and he asked him to give provisions for his, his men. And he, Nibal said, what do you... What do you think I am? I give uh, my, my stuff to anybody. And his name means foolish or mad. And that's one of the stars up here. Uh, Nibal uh, means fool. <laughs> and it's uh, 5037. Excuse me. He's um, Nibal. That's his name. He's a fool. Uh, so. That one of the one of the stars here, and then you got Rakis, uh, uh, which means the bound uh, with a chain. So it's it means bound with a chain, and it's uh, seventy four oh five. And these are all pictures of, of the the enemy here. Uh, when he's bound, seventy four oh five is bind. Uh, it's Rakas, and that's. The, the, the name of the star is Rakis, R-A-K-I-S, Rakis. And that's the uh, Hebrew over here is Rakas, which means to bind. And that's what's going to happen to him. And then you got another one is uh, the deceiver, uh, Sugia, which means the deceiver. And I, I got a couple of different words here, Shaga. They have Sugia, but it's Shaga in the Hebrew, 7686. 76, 86, and without these star names, you wouldn't know what this, uh, this thing was all about. Uh, so, guys, to err, to go astray, and um, uh, deceiver is 7683. Is that right? Hold on a second. To err, to go astray. Oh, this is uh, one of the stars. It's Sugia, and it's called the Sea. But we, we know the one in uh, in the Greek is Planos. Shafat. Uh, uh, 82, no, that's not that. Sugia. So we'll, we'll just keep that Saga there, um, which is one of the stars here. So we know what it means to, to err. Uh, and it's, it, it's a deceiver. And we got on a bath. We got that. Um, Arabus on a bath. There's another R Ara and Boos. What's that? Uh, the hair, the enemy that comes uh, plucking, uh, treading on the foot. Uh, Boos 0947. I don't know if we look at this yet. 0947. I think we looked at this already. Treading under. That's Boos. Yeah, treading under. So that's one of these over here too. Boos treading under. All right. So basically, the the hair. Um, I know I skipped a few things here, but uh, I can't get can't give you all of these stars because some of these stars. Uh, I'm just giving you the main ones that so we can understand what what's what it's talking about. Um, okay, so procyon. Let me get into this now. The lepus, the hair, the trodden on the foot. Uh, like I said, sometimes it's pictured as a, a serpent, and one it is a, it's an unclean bird uh, standing on the serpent, and and we know that the uh, the hawk is the enemy of the of the serpent. Uh, and it, this is actually being crushed by Orion's foot. So when you look at the other constellation, you'll see uh, that this hair uh, is being crushed by Orion's foot, and it's the enemy of him that cometh. Uh, enemy, okay, we looked at that, and so he shall tread down the wicked. And we'll look at some verses here uh, for this uh, Lepus, uh, Malachi uh, 4.13.
413, just to run it. 413, excuse me, 4, 1 to 3. Ah, that makes sense. All right, all right. Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the store. Small, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under your soles of your feet in the day that I do this, say the Lord of all. So we're going to be there with him when he's doing this. And um, uh, there was a whole bunch of cross-references here. Uh, this, can I do this? Four, three. I guess I can. Hold on a second. Okay. Four, three. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay. There we go. So, um, I didn't go through all of these, but the, the you, you do a cross-reference on, on some of these verses, and you come up with some good stuff. Right there, Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between thee and a woman, and between thee, thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. I mean, that's, that's the springboard verse. This verse is the verse that almost every myth in creation is based on this Genesis 3.15. You can, you can trace every one of these myths back to this verse, Genesis 3.15. Uh, and all of these verses here have to do with that. Um, let me see. Come there. Uh, uh, all, all this too, just, I can't read all of these, but these are great verses here talking about him treading down the enemy and, and lifting us up, you know. Um, yeah, all of these verses are good. They of vengeance is mine. Uh, the foot shall tread it down, even the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. Uh, I have trodden the winepress alone, and the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. <laughs> for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. So there, yeah, in that same that one verse, you got the day of vengeance in his heart, where he's going to destroy the enemies, and the year of my redeemed has come, where he's going to help us, so, and that's the, the one when we're going to be taken out of, uh, and then be with him, you know. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, in mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me, uh, and I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury. I will bring down their strength to the earth. Um, some good verses. And then Psalms, uh, is it Psalms? No, it's, yeah, Psalms 60. Um, Psalms 60. 60, 12. Uh, 12. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall dread, tread down our enemies. That's great. And you can do a cross-reference on this and come up with uh, a bunch of verses that have to do with this. Uh, it is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon high places. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in my arm by my arms. Uh, thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holding me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps unto me, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them, neither did I turn against them until they were consumed. Uh, all of these verses are great. Uh, Psalms uh, 144.1 1, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. Uh, that could be literally, but uh, it's it's by the word of God also, you know. Um, 
and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Uh, Joshua is talking to Joshua, telling him to be strong. Um, and we'll get down to Revelation 19. That whole chapter is great. He says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And then we got one more. I want to look at Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63. Uh, 3 and 4. I hope so, because there's no third, third three, four. three and four. I have trodden the winepress alone, and the people there was done with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stand my raiment. We read this already, uh, but it's all good stuff. Um, and that's the lepus. Uh, he's going to be treading him down. Uh, he's going to destroy the, the serpent, the old serpent, the devil, the enemy. And then uh, Canis, uh, Canis Major, that's the dog, that's uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, uh, let me see what I got on him. Hold on a second. I got Sirius, that's Melchizedek. I didn't get into that too much, but there. Uh, if we see that, shall tread down our enemies. Yeah, all these verses here, uh, talking about them. Yep, okay. 63.4, we did that, 63.3. Uh, for in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down. So all of this stuff about trodden down and the blood and all of this good stuff is, uh, is going to be happening here. Uh, and But I want to get to this Canis Major, which is serious. Sar, here it is. Um... Uh, 2061 Zeb. Zeb, that's not it. Hold on a second. Scarlet, shiny. Yeah. Okay. Let's 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 put this up here. Uh, the shiny. But there was something else I wanted to look at. Hold on a second. Uh. Okay. The right hand. That's Benjamin. We'll get into that. Al Shira and Al Jemin. Uh, okay, that's Benjamin. Yes, okay. That's part of this too. Um, and this, I'm sorry for uh, not having this ready for you guys. Uh, I should have been more prepared here, but we're doing all right here. Parak Amas. Hold on a second. Uh, so uh, Rezan Gamar. I'm just trying to get these uh, these star names because these are all star names here. Uh, Procyon. That's Parag. Okay, this is the little. This is the, the the little dog. That's that's the minor dog. All right. So this one must be the amazing dog here. This is Sar. So it's serious is the name of uh, this is the brightest star in the sky uh and um let me put something else up here hold on a second serious the brightest star in the sky um and it means uh, prince uh captain chief ruler leader uh and um isaiah Nine six has this uh, this verse here. Isaiah nine six. All right. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And that's the star. So we get the word sir from and all that stuff. Uh, it, it's also called uh, the head or the hawk uh, coming down swiftly. And we know that the hawk is the natural enemy of the serpent. Uh, it's also uh, 
called a wolf. Uh, but we're not going to get, get into that. We're just going to get into the word Sirius, which is the name of the star, uh, which means uh, prince or captain. Uh, so we're not going to get into all the pictures. Uh, Sirius is, is associated with heat. Uh, so the hottest part of the year is, is still called what? The dog days of summer, right? So that's what Sirius is, is the star that's up there. And it's, it's associated with the dog. Whenever you see uh, Sirius uh, and, and the, the picture of the dog, uh, and, and it's very hot. So we got the dog days of summer. That's where the phrase comes from. Um, and this uh, star up here, uh, besides this uh, Sirius, uh, is uh, Mizram. So we'll take the star, the star out of there. And this Razan. Um, means uh, ruler. Uh, the star is called Mizram, M I R Z A M. We have here Raza. Somebody. Hold on a second. Uh, okay. Oh, it is. Oh, I don't know. We'll have to keep it. Was uh, it distracting? Yeah, Razan. Uh, Seventeen thirty-six. That's one of the stars. And you got uh, Shani. There's another star here. Uh, it's called. Uh, Sierra Prince Shani, 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 was shiny. Hold on, that's Wesson, and that's 8144. There's another star called Wesson, W E S E N. Uh, we got uh, uh, Shani, and this is also called Scarlet or Crimson, but it's uh, uh, bright and shiny also. And you got this uh, this other one, Tola, that's the Scarlet, the Worm, the Crimson. All right. And then you have another uh, star here that's called uh, Adhara, which means glorious. Uh, and it's Al Adra or Al Udra. And we got uh, Adar. Is, is it? So that's the Hebrew name for this star. And it's glorious. And all of these things uh, are what this, this uh, Sirius, the prince, is all about. Uh, and then you got Ashar. Uh, which is um, means uh, a share who shall come, and that's 833. So, uh, the star means who shall come. Uh, but we got here blessed lead to go straight to walk to go on advance. Uh, basically, what that uh, a share means. So, those are the, the stars, the, the main stars. Uh, but you got one here. Uh, because this is 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 the the, the one uh, on the right here, so it's called uh, Al Shira and Al Gemini, the Prince or the Chief of the Right Hand, and we'll look at a couple of these words here. Eighty three, twenty three, and we'll we'll put these together. Oh, eighty three, twenty three. Uh, that's uh, Sar'ar, that's the, to rule, to make prince. And uh, Gemini, uh, which is Yam, Yamin 3225. I love when these stars come together and they tell the story. That's basically what we're doing here. We're telling the story with the stars. We get these verses out of here because they don't mean nothing to us here right now. So this is the prince or the ruler of the right hand. It's Sarah and Yamin, and those are the two stars there. Uh, but when you put these together, you get what? You get 1144, and that's Benjamin. Benjamin is uh, the son of the right hand. I love that. I like that. Put that in there. Um, so the Egyptian name is Seir. And that means prince. Um, 
What's this? I got a, a Greek word here. Hold on a second. 1188. I think that's uh, Dexios. Yeah, that's the right hand. Okay. Dexios is right. Right hand. Okay. So that's um, uh, the prince, the brightest star in the heavens. Okay. Um, that's the, the stars. I mean, the bright, the shining, glorious. Uh, who shall come? Uh, the prince or chief of the right hand. He rule. He's the prince. Uh, the son of the right hand. Um, prince of peace. And some of the verses that go with this. Uh, this uh, decan. Uh, we looked at Isaiah 9, 6. The prince of peace. Then we got Isaiah 55. And 4. 55. And four witness. Uh, behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Uh, so this is the the, the prince of peace that will uh, destroy uh, the, the the king of fierce countenance, and that's in Daniel eight. The first time I read this, I said, "What do you? This they really don't have nothing to do with here." But Daniel eight. When you get down to the last verse, you'll understand what it's talking about. 8, uh, 23 to 25. It says, uh, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, and th that's going on now, too. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. <laughs> he shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. So that's basically what's going to happen uh, when the prince of princes, when the Sa'ar comes, and then... Um, uh, he, how is he going to be destroyed? Uh, he's going to be destroyed by the by the Prince of Princes, uh, with Second uh, Thessalonians two eight. He's going to be destroyed, uh, and then that wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy ha with the brightness of his coming, the shiny, the shining of his coming. So he is king of kings and lord of lords, and we read this already uh, in, in Revelation uh, 19, 16. So all this has to do with this, this decan here. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, king of kings and lord of lords, and he's going to come and destroy, and we're going to be there watching. All right. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the last decan, uh, oh, 809. Good. Hey, John. Yo. How are uh, you doing? I'm doing. So the person who's in power will be destroyed by Christ himself, as we know. Okay. That's the question I'm asking. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm sorry. That's when you're making a statement. I couldn't hear what you said. What I'm saying is what's going on in the world right now as mm. far as scripture is concerned and scripture that it dictates what's going to happen. And we don't know who or what not per se, but I just want to clarify the things that are happening right now uh, to draw a contrast as far as what's really going on, uh, because I've been closely listening to you as far as what you're teaching and everything is true per se and 
I'm just uh, trying to wrap my head around what's really going on and does it uh, it doesn't bother me per se but I just want to see what you guys are saying per se and I'm just trying to learn as a learner per se uh what's really going on because I'm very concerned what's going on in the world right now as far as scripture is concerned because scripture you can't debut it it is what it is and that's just the way it is uh, I don't know if it, you know we know as a family we know that it's coming true what the good Lord said he's going to do and he will call out anybody. Doesn't matter who it is. And he will tell it like this. And that's, I just want to make sure I'm understanding right. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I mean, you know, you got it right because scripture is being fulfilled. Uh, you turn on the news every day and you see scripture being filled right before your eyes. You know, <laughs> only you and that's, 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 the world. And that's what I say because. Scripture is being fulfilled as we sit here and talk right now on Skype. Yes, sir. And uh, I just, I just, I'm in a different location. I'm nowhere close to my home, but you know, I try to get on Skype as quick as I could. And I'm listening, and uh, I'm just wanting to be sure that I'm, I'm here when I'm here. It's true, which, which is true for a second. I just want to make sure I'm making the connection between, okay. but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. And that's what we're doing with this Gemini. You know, we're, we're talking about, you know, the United, uh, the twins united. Or what's that? That's God and, 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 and the Son. That's, that's, that's Christ and the church. And that's us. That's what this, this constellation is all about. And we talked about the hair. which is the serpent, actually. And he's going to be trodden underfoot like, like every other star uh that that has to do with the serpent is, is going to be uh, like the scorpion like uh <laughs> like uh, the, the sea monster or the the, the, serpent, the snake all of these uh pictures of of, of satan they're all going to be crushed uh but by, by the by the heel but you know but, but you know what i'm talking about you i understand everything you're saying i just want to be sure you know call me crazy but you're people, crazy. Say, you're conspiracy. people say you're a conspiracy theorist. So like, no. Uh, I'm Tim, I, uh, Timothy, Timothy, I don't, I don't care uh, about uh, what's going on in the world. I don't care about the news. I don't care who's right, who's left, who's wrong, who's in the middle, uh, who's good, who's evil. I, that's not my concern. I don't care what's going on. I, I have I'm, no conspiracy. I'm aware. And, John, and I'm aware. That's not I'm my British. But I just want to make sure, you know, because everything you've ever taught has been scripture and yep. you're, you're spot on. That's the way I see it. That's, that's all we're going to. I got a couple, I got a couple I just, minutes. I just, want to make, I just want to make sure, and I'm sorry if I'm interrupting anybody. I just, and I don't doubt nothing what you're saying. I don't doubt it whatsoever. Yeah, I'm just reading here. I'm, I'm just reading the star names. I'm telling you what the stars mean. Uh, I, you know, if there's a, if there's a mistake in that, then we're gonna have to go to scripture and find out. But uh, all, yeah, all I, I can. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not going to doubt your word. Yeah. You it's know, not, brother. I'm not going to doubt your word. It's not my word. I'm you, about Christ's word, not mine per se, or yours per se. Not my word. I just want to make sure I'm hearing because call me a doubt, Thomas. Per se. But the thing about it is, I want to make sure, and we're all guilty of that. But I just want to make sure because everything you're saying right now is part of. Okay. I see. 
I hear it. It's what's going on in the world right now. I just want to let you know I'm with you on that. I just want to clarify a couple of things per se, and I, I, I apologize for interrupting. You know, That's all right. That's all right, brother. Love you. So this uh, this third decan is called the uh, the second dog, or uh, Canis Minor, uh, and this is the the exalted. Did I finish this up? Yes, King of Kings. Oh, okay. And he he's the redeemer. Uh, the the main star here is uh, Procyon, P R O C Y O N. Uh, and I, I, I look, it's called the Redeemer, but when you break this, this word down in the, um, um, it, it, it means uh, the four dog, like the dog that comes before a four dog, F O R E D O G, Procyon. That's basically what it means. But they're calling it the Redeemer or the Redeemed. And we got a star here uh, associated with uh, Procyon or Procyon. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Uh, 6561. Uh, Parak. Uh, uh, to break off, to break, to tear apart, to tear away. And also means redeemed over here. Uh, you can see Redeemer. And where's the, uh, where's the first here? Rent me. Okay, Psalms 136.24. He hath redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy and dearth forever. So they put this parak in here uh, for redeemed. Uh, so it's like uh, tearing us away uh, from the enemy uh, or, or uh, you know, breaking off our connection with the enemy, uh, redeeming us, basically, is what that means. Uh, to tear away, to snatch, or to rescue uh, from, from, from the enemy. And that's uh, Parak. And then you get another one. Uh, it's called the, pr the Prince or Chief of the Left Hand. Now we've got the Left Hand going on over here. And that's Al-Shira. We already looked at that up for, for the Prince. And uh, Shemalaya is the... Uh, the left hand, 8040. Well, let me just put these together so you can see both of them. Uh, we already showed you Shira, and that's 8269, I think. Hold on a second. Um, hmm. Shira. I got Shira up here, 8269. Nine. So that's the prince. And then you got the left hand is uh, Shemol, Shemolai, they say, but we got Shemol, 8040. 40. So left hand. So these are the two stars here. Shira or Sar and uh, Semole or Semol. So he's the chief or the captain of the, of the left hand. Um, and I don't have a little name on that. Hold on a second. And then you got Mizram, uh, Mirzam. Uh, it's the same one we saw up in the, in the other dog. Uh, means prince or ruler. Uh, Razan, 7336. We looked at that already. Oh, 7336. Right, we'll throw it up there. All right. Razan, that's the prince or ruler. So that's what these, these, these dogs mean. These dogs are the savior. Uh, and then um, another one is Gomi Gomira, which is one who completes or perfects, and that's 1584. And that's what this dog is doing. 1584. If you want to call it a dog, I'm just talking about the star. Uh, Gamar means to cease, to come to an end, uh, or, or to per to perfect something. And then uh, Gomisa. Is, is burdened or loaded or bearing for others. And that's uh, 6,006. Is laded and he's carrying the burden uh, uh, for somebody else uh, to carry the load. Amas is, 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 is the star. So those are the main stars in this thing here. And he's uh, um, 
we've got another word for redeem, but that's a different word for redeem. Okay, redeemer. Uh, so this constellation uh, Gemini, uh, and especially this one here, uh, it, it completes and perfects what the Messiah has come to do and to be. Uh, and to be the Prince of Peace. He's our Redeemer. Uh, and that's what these, these two, uh, the Canis Major and Canis Minor, Minor is talking about. Uh, he's, he's, he's coming to help us and crush uh, the enemy, uh, the serpent. Uh, Isaiah 49. Uh, might have read these a couple of times already, but let's do it again. Isaiah 49. Uh, 24 to 26. 24 to 26. Uh, shall the brave be taken from the mighty? Uh, but thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. <laughs> and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Then this Redeemer here is not Pro Procyon, but it's probably that Galal. Where is it? I can't find it now. There it is, the Galal. Yeah, that's Redeem or Redeemer. Galal, that's the, the, the Hebrew word we're familiar with when we're talking about Redeemer. Uh, but this other proxy on Isaiah 49 Isaiah 49 24 to 26 all right thank you and then we got Isaiah 59 uh, 19 and 20 Isaiah 59 19 and 20 so shall the I fear the name of the Lord from the west and from his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob say the Lord uh, and might as well read the last one as for me this is my covenant with them say the Lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of thy mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. So, you know, like you said, you're not supposed to be afraid of, of, of these people. But as long as you study, you'll have the words inside you. You can't just, uh, it's not going to happen by osmosis. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to study. Isaiah 53, and, and the last verse uh, of uh, the story of Christ here. Yeah. 53 12 we know Isaiah 53 is all about Christ uh, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors and that's why he's uh, he's going to be doing what he's doing he's our redeemer he's our savior and uh, Whew. Got through that. There's a lot of a lot of confusion in the beginning for me with this uh, this particular constellation. But uh, oh, you still got my ugly face up there, huh? Okay. Well, we got through it, you know. And um, I want to see uh, if we can get uh, who's there? Steve Maruso, can you uh, can you pray for us, please? If you're there, I'm here. I, hold on. I, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, Almighty Father in heaven, your grace and your glory is abound in all things. From the dawn of time, written in the stars, you've given us salvation. And through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, we can see your truth. We thank you for everything. We thank you for this study. We thank you for all the, the people that you put in our life through grace and truth and through Pastor Jim. And we uh, seek your blessing. We seek your protection. We seek your guidance. We seek your glory in all things. 
Amen. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank Amen. you, John. It's a magnificent study. There's a lot going on there. I was listening to Pastor Jim today, and he was talking about the Maserat. And, uh, okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, a lot to swallow. It is, man. Uh, we're doing it one, one day at a time. Yeah. Uh, it is it's, a lot to swallow. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Way, above, way above my pay grade. Especially me. Yeah, once once we get into these uh, constellations and, and understand uh, that the gospel was, was written in the stars long before, you know, thousands of years before there was a written word, um, this gospel was in the stars. And it was taught to Adam, taught it to Seth, taught it to Enos, and they all looked up in the stars and they knew the gospel was there. And it was taught to them by God. And he named the stars. And uh, that's all we have to know, you know. So I'm going to stop recording. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going to run with that. <laughs>